This video is the start of unit circle and trigonometric ratio. So the first part is really just theory, and then we'll go on to some questions that link to this topic. So the unit circle is a circle with its center at the origin and a radius of unit one. So as you can see in here, that circle drawn as unit circle, and everywhere on that circle, the radius will be one. Angles in the unit circle are measured starting on the positive x-axis and turning anti-clockwise. There will be positive angles or clockwise, which will give you negative angles. So it always starts on the x-axis and for positive angles goes anti-clockwise. The quadrant axes we divide into four quadrants, as you can see in there in that diagram, first, second, third and fourth. And we can add to this to show where the trigonometric functions are positive and negative. So they're all positive in the first quadrant, sine in the second, tan in the third and cos in the fourth. Now if we have a point on the unit circle and it has coordinates x, y, we can extend this to work out actually what those coordinates x and y are in terms of sine, cos or tan. So if we look at this diagram here, sine of the angle, from a sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it would be y over 1, which would just equal y. The cos would be x over 1 adjacent over hypotenuse, which just equals x. Tan, remember, is sine over cos, so it would be y over x. Now from here, if you see our coordinates here are x and y. We've just found out here, I put some stars, sine theta equals y and cos theta equals x. So we can then extend this understanding to say that our point on a unit circle must be cos theta sine theta. The equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So using that information we just found there with those points, it will be sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So y squared plus x squared equals 1. Now, with our sine, cos and tan, obviously across our quadrants, there's going to be values that have the same x and y values. So here we've got find an obtuse angle that has the same sine as 70 degrees. So an obtuse angle is an angle between 90 and 180. We want an angle same as the sine. Now with sine, Two angles have the same sign if the angles add up to 180 degrees or pi radians. So here we've got degrees for this first one. So sine of 70 would equal the sine of 180 minus 70, which would equal the sine of 110. So they're equal. Then we can do the same in radians. So we have a pi on 4 here. So the sine of pi on 4 will equal the sine of pi minus pi on 4, because remember pi is the same as 180 degrees, which will equal the sine of 3 pi on 4. Then we can do the same with the cosine, but with cosine, the two angles have to add up to 360 degrees, or 2 pi if it's in radians. So for the 50 degrees, it would be the cos of 50 would equal the cos of 360 minus 50, which would be the cos of 310. And for D, we'd, the cos of 2 pi on 3 would equal the cos of 2 pi minus 2 pi on 3, which would equal the cos of 4 pi on 3. So the main thing to remember here is that for Angles that have the same sine or cos for sine, the two angles should add to 180, and for cos, they should add to 360. So example two, without finding theta, find cos theta when sine theta equals 3 over 5, and theta is acute. So acute is between 0 and 90 degrees. Now I'm going to show you two different ways you can do this. First of all, I'm going to show you using the formula above that we said, so the sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So if sine theta equals 3 on 5, that means it would be 3 on 5 squared plus cos squared theta equals 1. So cos squared theta will equal 1 minus 3 on 5 all squared, which is 9 on 25, which equals 16 on 25, which means that cos theta would equal the square root of 16 over the square root of 25, which would be 4 on 5. Now another way you can do this is by actually using Pythag. We know that sine theta is 3 over 5, which is opposite over hypotenuse. 
So in a triangle, the opposite is 3 and the hypotenuse is 5. So then we can use Pythag to work out what the adjacent is of just label it x here. So it would be 5 squared equals 3 squared plus x squared. 25 equals 9 plus x squared. And then you end up with x squared equals 16. So x equals 4. And that means if x equals 4, then cos theta must equal 4 and 5. Okay, example 3. Find exact values of sine theta, cos theta and tan theta for when the theta equals 3 pi on 4. So with here, you need to refer back to a unit circle. That's the easiest way. So 3 pi on 4, you'll find is here. Now, if we think about the point on the unit circle here, this bit here would be pi on 4. Because obviously, 180 degrees is pi. So all we actually really then have to do is think about pi on 4, which is 45 degrees, and then we can go straight to our exact values or a unit circle. Personally, I would go to my exact value triangles to work this out, but it is completely up to you with whichever method you feel most comfortable, but this would be expected to be able to do without a calculator. With my exact value triangle, so pi on 4, it's the same as 45 degrees. Well, on the side of our triangles, we want 1 root 2. And then we can go from there. So the th sine theta would equal 1 on root 2, opposite of hypotenuse. Now, we've got to think about our coordinates. We've got to think about our quadrants and where sine is positive. So we know sine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, which means this answer will also be positive. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so still 1 over root 2. But in the second quadrant, cos is negative. Because remember, cos is our x coordinate, and in, that, in the second quadrant, x is our all negative. And then tan theta, opposite over adjacent, which would just be 1 over 1, so just 1. And once again, tan is negative in that quadrant. The other way you could work out tan, remember, is sine over cos, so you'd have 1 over root 2 divided by negative 1 over root 2, which would also give us negative 1. Okay, 4 pi on 3, part b. If we think about our unit circle, 4 pi on 3 is somewhere down here. Now we want to think about this angle here to the x-axis, what would that be? So 3 pi on 3 would be 180, now we've got 4 pi on 3, so it's just 1 more pi on 3. So this in here is pi on 3, which is, if we convert it to degrees, 60 degrees. And in our exact value triangle, it's 2, 1, root 3, and our pi on 3 would be here. And then we can just go from there. So sine theta would equal root 3 on 2. Now in the third quadrant, sine is negative because it is, remember sine represents our y-coordinate, all y's are negative in the third quadrant. Cos theta would be a half. Now once again, cos is negative in the third quadrant. And then tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so it would just be root 3. And tan is always positive in that quadrant. Remember tan as well, if you wanted to, you can work it out as your sine over your cos. So you could have done negative root 3 on 2 divided by a negative a half, which also equals just root 3, because the 2s will cancel. Example 4 showed that 8 sine pi on 3 cos 5 pi on 6 equals negative 6. So with this one, once again, we can just think about our values of sine pi on 3 and 5 cos 5 pi on 6 first. So sine pi on 3. Up here, I've got my pi on 3 triangle from part B of the question before. Now, sine of pi on 3 is root 3 on 2. Now, cos 5 pi on 6. If you think about unit circle, 5 pi on 6 is in this quadrant. And to make pi, we just need another pi on 6. So this will be a pi on 6 here. Now, in our triangles above, pi on 6 is this red angle that I'm labelling on the second triangle from part B. And so the cos of that 
would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 3 on 2. Now, here, in the second quadrant, cos is negative, so it'll be negative root 3 on 2. Then we can just put everything into our equation. So now we've got 8 multiplied by sine pi on 3, cos 5 pi on 6, and we want to work this out. So here, 8 times sine pi on 3 will be 8 times root 3 on 2. Multiply by cos 5 pi on 6, which is multiplied by negative root 3 on 2. We have only one negative there, so the answer will be negative. So we'll have 8 times root 3 times root 3 over 2 times 2. Remember, multiply the numerators and the denominators. Root 3 times root 3 is just 3. So this will be 8 times 3 on the numerator, which is 24. 2 times 2 is 4, so 24 divided by 4. Give us negative 6. Example 5. Find all angles between 0 and 2 pi with a cosine of a half. So we look 0 to 2 pi means we're looking at a full unit circle. Cosine of a half. The half is positive, so we only want the quadrants where cos is positive, which is the first and the fourth. So we're going, going to be looking at these two quadrants. Now we want when cosine of a half. So what we can do is I'm just going to scroll back up, go back to our triangles. We think which one will give us a half as our answer? Oh, this one in part B will. Now, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse that will give us a half is 1 over 2, and which would give it be the pi on 3. So on here and here, this angle would be pi on 3. This angle here would be negative pi on 3. Or you could also say it's 5 pi on 3. So our angles would be pi on 3 or 5 pi on 3. Now we have to save 5 pi on 3 and not negative pi on 3 because our question tells us our angles have to be between 0 and 2 pi. Negative pi on 3 is not in that domain, which is why we have to write the 5 pi on 3 instead. Example 6, if sine theta equals negative 3 quarters, and our angle is between pi and 3 pi on 2, find cos theta and tan theta. Our domain here is between pi and 3 pi on 2. On our unit circle, that means we are looking for things in the third quadrant, which means cos will be negative and tan will be positive. Then we can the same idea when we did a question earlier with either the Pythag or the cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. We can use either of those for this. So I'm going to just going to use this one for this question. So side squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So negative 3 on 4 all squared plus cos squared theta equals 1. Just rearrange this and simplify. So cos squared theta would equal 1 minus 9 on 16, which equals 7 on 16. Now cos squared theta, so now we need to get rid of the square, so cos theta will equal the square root of 7 over the square root of 16 and the plus or minus of that, which would equal the square plus or minus of the square root of 7 on 4. Now the one thing we have to think about here is in this quadrant here, the third quadrant cos is negative, so our answer would be the negative, so it would be negative root 7 on 4. Then for tan, tan is just sine over cos, so it would be negative 3 on 4 divided by negative root 7 on 4, which is the same as negative 3 quarters times by negative 4 on root 7. The 4s will cancel, and then so are the negatives, so we'll end up with 3 on root 7 positive. And if you wanted to rationalise that, you could do, but it's not necessary. But this would also be the same as 3 root 7 on 7. In example 7, if tan theta equals negative 2, and we're going, our domain is between 3 pi on 2 and 2 pi, find sine theta and cos theta. So if we know that tan theta equals negative 2, that also means that sine theta over cos theta equals negative 2, because remember tan theta is just sine over cos. And then we can do some rearranging with this. So sine theta will equal negative 2 
cos theta. And then we can go back to the identity of the sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Because we know that sine theta equals negative 2 cos theta. That means negative 2 cos theta squared plus cos squared theta equals 1. And then we can expand this and rearrange this to find our answer. So this would expand to 4 cos squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. 4 cos squared theta plus cos squared theta will give us 5 cos squared theta equals 1. So cos squared theta would equal 1 over 5. And cos theta would equal the plus or minus of the square root of 1 over the square root of 5. Now we're looking in the fourth quadrant here from 3 pi and 2 to 2 pi which means cos is positive, so this would equal positive 1 on root 5. Now we want to find the sine theta. We've now got the cos theta, and now we can sub our cos theta back into our this equation here to find out what sine is. So sine theta equals negative 2 times cos theta, which is 1 on root 5, which will equal negative 2 on root 5. And we do know that sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. And that is the start of unit circle and trigonometric ratios.